Thank you, ladies. That was definitely an interesting presentation. Next up, we have Rav to talk about ability scaling. Thanks, Professor. I'd like to start by pulling up a graph that shows the average game length and how it changes in each ELO. Down in Piss Pit Scuzzyville, we have very short games because most players down here are either trying to derank accounts to iron so they can sell them, or it's some LS hating sweat stain doing his 45th unranked to diamond race with his butt buddies just trying to speed through the reject ranks. The only authentic players at this rank are no offense, Sarah, and the casual Carls who just started playing and will be quitting soon because of this bullshit. Then we get to the hell on earth ranks between silver and platinum where game times are the absolute longest because everyone just wants to play team deathmatch and no one has a blue dick on a pig's clue on how to actually end a game. At high ranks the games get short again because people understand that Riot made the snowball effect in this game stronger than freaking Will Ferrell in Elf. So they just forfeit when they know it's over. Then of course we have pro play the thing that people put on to help get their babies to fall asleep. Games are long because there's so much farming you'd think the whole league is sponsored by the agricultural industry. But the majority of us in here today are stuck right in the long game ranks so I started thinking why not pick a champ with high scaling abilities. On paper the highest scaling abilities are things like a full MF ult or a Draven ult that hits both ways but I wanted to stick to more realistic abilities which ended up being Evelyn ult. An execute that scales with 180% AP, and then this Dragonfly's empowered Q, a whopping 241% of AD ratio. But when I was about to get into the game, the app I used told me to build first strike which adds 10% to these ratios and voila, I knew who I would be playing today. Oh and the app was called Professor. You're just sucking up to the teacher. No no please continue. You see I main ADC so when it comes to jungle knowledge I'm not exactly Tarzan. So having build and rune recommendations is great but what is greater is having a pre-game scouting report. I never know who the hell to gank so when I saw that my ADC looked like quite a good plat player and their bot was lacking in all departments, I knew that focusing bot would probably be my best bet. I also got access to things like summoner spell trackers where I could tell it that the cute blonde just flashed and have it keep track of when that'll be back up for me. This was hugely helpful in knowing who and when I should be ganking. The report warned me against trying to gank their slither tits as she had quite the record but I ignored its advice and tried anyways. It didn't go well. Anyways the scouting report was hugely helpful and completely predicted who would pop off and who to avoid so we won the game thanks to the power of its data and then it gave me access to a bunch of post-game analytics and graphs so I could see where I need to focus on improving in the future. It's all 100% free and since Riot is too lazy to build these types of features into the game, you are just at a disadvantage if you aren't using it so check my link to get it today. Very good young sir. Now I'd like to show clips from my games. The first of which I was on the Scorpid sex worker as I did a quick clear then headed bot because word on the street is this Ash was a great recipient of Valentine so I air mailed her one flash to tit and it worked like a charm to get an early kill. Then we're cooking up some white meat in river when the chick in the pirate cosplay randomly decides she doesn't want to be seen hanging with us so I'm like okay fuck you now some prom queen on her period can come in here chucking abilities like she's off her rocker and I'll have to cut the scene before you see me pull off an insane play. I hit 6 which means I now counter human eyeballs and I use this to sneak up on Kanye and the chicken coo who thinks I'm coming from the other angle but I don't dress like a sex slave to not prefer hitting it from the back so he gets pokey things up his a-hole and then I ult to send him home. This sets me up nicely to quietly spectate a wild mf deep throat the bbc of arrows but right before I get there the wall shits out another bad guy so I stick to the plan of blowing a kiss to the carry and then sticking my poisonous pigtails deep inside the ash hole. This works but that parkouring reaper gets away so instead of getting three, we get one and then an awkward extended parade behind the goth bride until she pisses off. And I know I know you are probably like Rav you allergic to your ult button or what and I just want you to know I was saving it specifically for when I ran into a little gothic mole rat so that I could whip it out at the- and the best part about playing a champ like this BDSM bug is that you don't even need to be looking at the screen when you're playing her because you can just jam keys until the ADC dies. It turns out Kled and Nar were having a rodent off in the top lane and let's just say Nar is gonna be too embarrassed to show his face near any hamster wheel anytime soon but it also means we now have to deal with a top hatted asshole who owns a mount plus these damn pigtails are hard as shit to aim so I end up having to whip out the ol' win fight button just to put him down. 
But while I was busy getting all the footage for my own fail montage our Leona was sticking to their archer like a public indecency charge sticks to your personal record totally not speaking from personal experience totally never whipped out the wiggy at a shopping mall and that's why I make YouTube videos instead of having gainful employment hey look a dead ash. Anyways red meat is now on the menu at McDragons but I can't have that flapping filet gobbled up in front of me so I pull the super easy Jenga block if you're feeling that dank fucking analogy and then I just wait for everyone to evacuate the objective. That said they weren't just gonna watch us chomp down that red hot quarter pounder either but thankfully Leona's kit has 13 or 14 forms of CC so I just rode that bullshit bus for a bit before we had to shift focus onto depressed Billie Eilish as I hit her with the fuck you fade away before dancing around the kangaroo for a few until the boys are able to pin him down and piss on him. Then as I'm working towards acquiring some blue rings I realize I forgot to buy tickets to the top lane tussle so I try to sneak in without them noticing you know beat up a bride a bit but you don't get away with anything around that Australian pube so I hit my alt which ends up juking me out even so I'm sure his furry little ankles were fucked but you gotta give it to him. I don't know if it's a height complex or what but the little fella was wanting to fight anything he could get his hands on. It's now past the point where most super low or high elo games would have ended but not in my rank baby no everyone's just jamming their dicks down the same lane like a bunch of impatient bowling balls so I bust my cover to send a heart to the emo which tips everyone off and I end up having to call in the backup plan which was enough to get 3 of them killed so I can't complain. But since my last alt on this Prozac rodent was so buggy this time I was gonna let nothing get in my way of nailing it as I thought I'd just need to be slightly further away for it to knock so apparently I'm a selfish idiot making this whole thing about me when I didn't realize the two ADCs in the game were both participating in this year's who's more useless shit and it was a super close race. At one point Kanye tried to jump in and despite a good performance, we had to disqualify him on account of role racism. Anyways I'm now using my cloak of invisibility to spy on some shitters waiting for their uber to take them back to base but I'm generous so I offer one a quicker way back. That said Leona hasn't learned some important lessons that non-broken as fuck champs do when they are young so she's deeper than a dick inside of Riley Reed. but like how can you learn when you can hit miss skill shots like that while the rest of us are dealing with sophisticated kangaroos who clearly weren't a fan of arcane leaving just me to do a bunch of stabby dashy things until it pisses off. And for all the shit I talk about League of Legends, one day when I'm an old ass man I'm gonna tell my grandkids about the feeling I got as a fed assassin when I saw an ADC all by themselves. It would never get old. Like words cannot describe the feeling you get when you see an ADC anywhere at this point because even if you just barely miss the same zip code as your target with your abilities you can still one shot her. It's just so much easier than having to deal with getting inked on by a goth midget and relying on elder dragon to puke pummel the bitch to get the kill. And I know this game is supposed to highlight how hard her ult scales but I've gotta say her E was a backup singer that was definitely trying to steal the show. But I can't make fun of Silver Elo games going for 42 minutes and not show that I can MOBA correctly and steal objectives, Bruh. which meant I had to purge Elder off of not one shitter, but two while also denying Ash of having any use in this game. And instead of grouping and focusing objectives or pushing together we are over here trying to come up with some FBI super secret mission. Except the plan sucked ass and now I was stuck in their base in a horrible position with no choice other than to one shot their ash for the 35th time make like a fart and blow this shithole. Anyways one more fat sack of Jawea on the golden girl to erase her from my sight and the floodgates were open for me to run straight into their fountain and get arrowed as the curtains closed and thus exhibit A on why hard scaling abilities counter silver shenanigans was covered. Exhibit B was a bit different because even though I had even heavier scaling, the enemy team has the sex ant herself so prepare for quite the clash of giants in this one. That said the enemy team had one from the tribe of he who shits wind so I just knew an early visit and the odds of me catching him with his dick in his hand doing something stupid as all shit were good. Then I wanted to get all up and in this bitch's forest to deny her from scaling but the wind shitter smelled an outnumbered fight and came running in like a blind bloodhound so I tickled his tits and then stepped out to pinch a quick fart before coming back to finish the job. And I know this is the third straight clip of me approaching the airhead and I don't want you to think I'm the guy who just bullies the slow kid, I am actually the slow kid himself and you can ask this minion for proof. Anyways we're all just prepping a skinny dip sesh in the river when things turn hostile. Brom tells the Aphelios that his dead stepsister was a whore and so all the boys have to step in to defend our boy. 
Enter Gwen looking at a line of healthy dudes with the attitude of a young Mia Khalifa thinking she can handle all of us at once but the Sheikh O sex doll keeps her occupied for too long as I jizz on Gerard Butler before coming back to barber her cue. This lines us up to tame the turquoise Charizard but the sky apparently had a spicy Middle Eastern breakfast and was now going to shit a Greek Spartan onto us but I hung out in the corner without being seen like I practice every weekend IRL at parties and with it we were out. At this point I have that fat 260% AD ratio Q but I barely needed it with everyone running butt ass naked one shot around in the lanes. Hell at one point I remember being able to spit a tooth at Brahm to kill him off. Every time people saw me they started bolting in the opposite direction like it was 2020 and I just had a positive COVID test as Yone was trying to intimidate us by missing two consecutive cues on minions as Shaco prepped to be an annoying dickhead while me and Billy Joe Armstrong stay back to deal with the soon to be satiator. I hopped away for a sec but don't think I pussed out, that shit ended with me spitting another tooth for the win and then slapping around the mermaid pimp for a bit right after. Evelyn finally decided to make an appearance and while I couldn't properly introduce myself the way I wanted to, I figured if I made a big enough impression on literally every single one of her friends that she came to the party with, including the strong one with the porn mustache, she would be down to do the bug nasty with me later. Turns out we were constantly on the defensive because my team was a bunch of bumbling morons who spent more time counting backward from 50 than doing literally anything of use. So the Bloons Tower Defense Impossible Edition continued as I kept cleaning up their shit until things got desperate and in a moment of weakness, I died to a windshitter. This is officially the end of my channel and my league career as I can't come back from throwing a game to he who shared a bunk with Yasuo. Brush your teeth tonight. Rav out.